So we know that Newton's second law of motion says that the net force acting on a particle is equal to the product of the mass of the particle and the acceleration that is induced by this net force. Now what's interesting is that Newton's second law of motion is applicable to a system of masses as well. So let us say you have three masses. Let us say you have mass m1 over here and you have mass m2 over here and let us say this another mass m3 and let us say each of these masses is subjected to a different force. So let's say the force on m1 is f1 on m2 is f2 and let us say on m3 is f3 then Newton's second law of motion says is that you can apply this equation to this system of masses as well with a couple of conditions. So let's see what are the conditions. So the left hand side would be nothing but the vector sum of all forces acting on the system. So it will be the vector sum of F1, F2 and F3 and this needs to be equated with the sum of the masses that is a capital M which is nothing but M1 plus M2 plus M3 and we take acceleration as acceleration of center of mass and the center of mass let's say of this system of particle resides let's say somewhere over here. So what we say is that the center of mass represents the entire system as if the entire mass resides over here and the acceleration of the center of mass would be plugged into this equation to make this equation valid. So now let's go ahead and see how we can prove that this equation is true for a system of masses as well. So in the last lesson what we learned was that the center of mass of a system of particles can be given as product of mass 1 into its distance from the origin plus product of mass 2 into its distance from the origin and so on till you reach mass n and its distance from the origin. So what we're assuming is that we have n number of masses which are moving in a single dimension, let's say along x coordinates. And while we are proving this equation for movement of a system of particles in x direction, you can extend the logic to a system of masses which are moving in three dimensional space as well. So we also need to divide this by the sum of the masses and let's take that as m. So m is nothing but m1 plus m2 plus m3 right up to mass n. So if we cross multiply this what we get is m into x center of mass of the system of particles is equal to this and if we decide to differentiate both sides with respect to time what you will get is m velocity of the center of mass is equal to m1 into its velocity plus m2 into its velocity and so on till you reach the nth mass and we multiply the mass into its velocity because dxn upon dt would be nothing but the velocity of that particle. Now if you further differentiate it once more with respect to time what you get is m a center of mass or the acceleration of center mass is equal to the product of m1 dv1 upon dt would be nothing but acceleration of that particle. So we write it as a1 plus m2 a2 plus so on till you reach the nth mass and when you differentiate the velocity of the nth mass with respect to time what you get is mn a n. Now we can further simplify this equation by writing this m a center of mass is equal to the force acting on mass 1 plus force acting on mass 2 plus force acting on mass 3 and so on till you reach force acting on nth mass. Now the right side is nothing but the sum of all external forces and internal forces acting on each of the particles and Newton's third law of motion says that the internal forces will tend to cancel each other. So the right hand side is nothing but the vector sum of the forces acting on the particle and these are only external forces. So we can write this as m a center of mass is equal to f net 
and here if net is the vector sum of all external forces and that's exactly what we earlier started with.